They travel thousands of miles, even crossing oceans along the way. And as they migrate, birds connect our world. In the summer, they call our backyards and our forests their home. But at other times of the year, they must fly south, to tropical and subtropical parts of the world where they can find warmth and food during the cold winter months. Tropical forests support some of the greatest diversity of life on Earth. But these same areas also produce one of the most valuable commodities on Earth. Coffee. Traditionally grown in the shade of mature trees and forests, Coffee travels in and out of the tropics and all over the world. People drink nearly a billion cups of it every day. <laughs> but in the last 30 years, over half of farms that grow coffee have eliminated the forests and shade trees that tropical wildlife depend upon. The resulting sun-grown coffee farms are relatively barren and can support only 10% of their former diversity. This land is no longer hospitable to the majority of creatures that call tropical rainforests home. Your daily coffee has an impact thousands of miles away. But what you drink, and how you ask for it, can be the key to a solution. In the foothills of the Andes Mountains in northern Colombia, the rainfall is high and the climate is warm, which create perfect conditions for growing coffee. Because of steep terrain, most farming done in this region of small towns are of modest size. And as a result, shade-grown coffee production continues. Sun-grown coffee grows faster, but also requires chemical fertilizers and other agents to produce more beans. Because of these added expenses, Many smaller farms in Latin America have kept shade trees and shade tolerant coffee varieties. On these family owned farms, more so than the larger corporate ones, the health and value of the land is appreciated as it is passed on to new generations. Shade coffee farms may contain dozens of native tropical tree species, which in turn host an increased diversity of other plants and animals. Once picked, the beans are mechanically separated from their red skins. On larger farms, this is done with motorized equipment, but the smaller farms still do it the old-fashioned way. Sliding roof panels are pulled back to open drying platforms where the husked beans are spread out to dry in the sun. Shade grown beans mature at a slower rate than the sun grown varieties, which increase their sugar content as well as their flavor. Regardless of whether it's grown on a large or small farm, shade coffee helps maintain a landscape that includes trees. 97% of the coffee produced today comes from sun plantations. Bare soil is often exposed in these plots, increasing erosion and the loss of nutrients. 
and higher temperatures associated with climate change appear to impact sun coffee varieties more so than their shade-protected counterparts. The hotter it gets, the smaller the sun-grown coffee crop is likely to be. But in the protected shade of trees, coffee not only thrives without pesticides and fertilizers, it helps provide habitat for two-thirds of the birds, for example, found in untouched tropical rainforests. Other benefits, such as clean and persistent water flow, come along with the trees as well. Conservation groups, such as Proavis in Colombia, protect critical habitat in coffee-growing regions. In addition, they have purchased a coffee plantation in this area with plans to use it to promote shade-grown coffee techniques to local farmers. They have also established a native tree nursery, which is used to help reforest wildlife corridors and ultimately sun-grown coffee plantations themselves. Proavis makes these natural areas open and accessible to others to raise awareness of the ties between wildlife, forests, and coffee production. And perhaps their most important audience are the region's children. Through classroom visits and exercises, the message of conservation is passed on. A yearly migratory bird festival is held in several locations throughout Colombia, giving local school children a chance to parade and help spread the word to their parents and neighbors. One of the most important messages is how their local forests and farms impact birds that migrate from thousands of miles away and in turn, how a forest thousands of miles away from Colombia can affect the birds they see outside their window. Migratory birds connect distant parts of the world. The loss of just one part of this migratory chain will threaten the survival of any single species of bird. Many of the birds that winter in Latin America return to the Appalachian Mountains of the United States in spring to mate and raise their young. But over the past several decades, whole mountains have disappeared in this area, and along with them, their forests, as surface coal mines strip the landscape bare. But also, as in the tropical forests of the south, the forests of Appalachia have groups seeking to repair the damages of the past. The Appalachian Regional Reforestation is trying to restore forests on surface mines. Not only to plant trees on these drastically disturbed sites, but also to restore both the function and the form of the forest that existed uh, prior to mining. No one can ever try to even attempt to restore Mother Nature the way she was prior to mining. But we can do the very best we can. And that's what the Appalachian Regional Reforestation is about. Hola, mi nombre es Elsie Joana. Tengo 17 años. Estudio en el Colegio Integrado Camilo Torres. Birds and coffee, like a letter, connect distant parts of the world. How coffee is grown in Colombia might ultimately decide whether a migratory bird returns to nest on your porch every spring. And how coal is mined in West Virginia might impact what bird school children in Colombia are familiar with. Coffee is one of the most easily seen parts of this puzzle. By knowing where your coffee comes from, by asking that yours be grown in the shade of old trees bathed in tropical mists, you can help ensure that these birds will always have a home.